Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Conservation Commission meeting for Monday, May 11th, 2020, a remote Zoom meeting. Um, this meeting is being recorded and is available on the YouTube channel. Um, first item, we'll just call for roll call uh, for the members present. If um, so, Tracy Sharkey, I. Katie Grace Dudley. Art Beckwith. Paul. Art Montman, he's here. <laughs> okay. Eric Harris. Here. Mike. I, I'm here. This okay. is Mike. Okay, so the only one that's not here right now is Mark Mungum. Right? Right. Okay. All right, first item on the agenda is 7 p.m. Notice of intent, public hearing continued, 45 Oak Street, BWC White and Reservoir, Blue Wave Solar. Take yeah, it away. So is, um, the applicant, I believe, is here too. Yeah, Jeff. so we have uh, Jeff Murphy uh, with Beals and Thomas representing the applicants. Um, I believe we have Matt Parlon and Jackie Firsty on as well with Blue Wave Solar. Um, so I believe, yep. So I guess if maybe uh, how we got to this point. So what we have, the major item on for tonight, um, and it was the, uh, I guess, maybe Jeff can give kind of give a little brief uh, executive summary of the history of the project and where we are to this point with uh, with conservation, with the ANRAD, with his permitting process. And then we solicited on, on his request, uh, I, I put in four uh, outside peer review consultants to look at the stormwater. So I don't know, Jeff, you wanna kind of give an executive summary for people, you know, a little, you know, to, to get a catch up of where we were. It's been a while, with, you know, we started with the ANRAD. Yep, yeah. yep. So yeah, as you recall, we went through the ANRAD process and confirmed all of the resource areas on site. And then we filed a concurrent notice of intent application as well as a site plan review. And throughout that process, initially, uh, you know, Bill Cundiff, the town engineer was going to be initially reviewing the site, you know, site plan review application as well as the stormwater. But due to the, uh, you know, the COVID situation, he was reassigned and then was not going to be able to finish his review of the stormwater. So that's where we got to of now uh, requesting a third party review just to keep, you know, the review of the stormwater going because that's kind of the last outstanding piece that we see uh, for the review of the project is just getting the um, stormwater looked at. So that's kind of where we are. <clears throat> Does that help? The, does that help the commission out? I mean, do you need to see the plans at all, or or we're at the point now where I think with uh, with conservation review, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. A lot majority of the project is outside the jurisdiction of the conservation commission, Jeff. That's correct. Yes, we have uh, some areas of off grading for the stormwater basin berms um, that are extending into the buffer zone, uh, but that's pretty much the limits of the the work in the buffer zone. It's just some limited clearing uh, for shading of the array as well as some grading for the stormwater basins. I can so bring... has the applicant chosen who they'd like to do the peer review on for the stormwater? Um, well, so I believe Steve sent four requests uh, for proposals out. Um, I believe we got ones back from Stantec, Lennard Engineering, uh, Beta and Par Corporation or Par Corporation. Yeah. That's right. so, so, so I sent these out to the commission, and you know, um, you know, the the prices were varied from six nine hundred all the way down from Par, which was the least expensive of thirty four hundred. Mm -hmm. And so the 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 review and and. Jeff, I'm not sure where you stand with planning board, but you know, at the time when I sent out the proposals, we only had the ability to ask for them to work under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Um, and as it relates to the stormwater management under the Wetlands Protection Act. So as you're looking at this, I, I'm not sure if you've had other meetings with the planning board subsequent, um, but 
the um, they might have some other criteria you have to keep in mind when you go in front of the planning board with either their town bylaws or site plan review regulations. I mean, so um, unfortunately, we couldn't combine the two boards at the time. So if our comments certainly can get passed on to the planning board, but I think the majority of the project, you know, has to get kind of site plan review and, and all the other boards approval, you know, and then finally come back from, to the planning board. So just keep that in mind as we're going through this exercise. Yeah, I mean, Bill Bill provided us a site plan review letter already that we, you know, responded to. I mean, that was back at like the end of February and then we issued a response letter to that. You know, he, he basically just kept a comment in there as a placeholder for stormwater review forthcoming. So we kind of got through all of those other comments and just stormwater was just the last piece of it. Um, so we're thinking that this review should certainly satisfy you know, not only the commission, uh, you know, interests, but also for the planning board. Again, there might be some very minor, you know, stuff outside of the typical stormwater review, but it should be pretty much the same review. We're, we're looking for the same things. So they, so I, I'm, I'm assuming that I would verify that and make sure that, you know, they, they the planning board gets approved, you know, you get approval from the stormwater management and, and design also with the planning board um and through site plan review and then the commission will come back and making sure that we're all in, in the same agreement with the same plan okay yeah i mean i think i think that should work yeah yeah so back to my original question so is the applicant um going to choose a, a consultant and then we're voting to use that consultant or what what's going to happen because I'm sure you can verify um, on Wednesday that that's sufficient, but they should be going by the guidelines in the site plan review anyway. So, right. So yeah. So the consultant, I guess, I, do you have the preference on which which consultant you like to use? I think you you picked uh, Par. Is that what you mentioned? Yeah, we, we certainly thought they seemed to have, you know, a reasonable timeline and things. And that's was what we were hoping for, you know, it seemed like they were going to be able to turn this around in a reasonable time frame and things. So, and so that's, you know, and so the members know that the, you know, the, the commission, I mean, the applicant is, is, is uh, responsible for paying for the review of the consultant and par matches up with the cheapest price they're the least expensive price or bid that or a proposal that came in mm -hmm. so if we get a, a, a vote from the commission if, if they agree to solicit and use par corporations to do the stormwater review for 45 oak street that'd be great you see do you want a motion to that effect Tracy? Um, yeah, I'm just reading um, the review and um, PAR will prepare a comment letter noting areas requiring clarification or supplemental information. So I would just want them to take a peek, even if, you know, once they prepare this comment letter, um, you know, the, main, the ultimate goal would be to have one good solid review for both boards. I mean, that's that's what our objective should be. So when they're preparing this comment letter, that, that should be included. So yeah, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, I'll move that we have Park Corporation perform the third party review for 45 Oak Street. Motion's been made. Second. Second by Paul. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, board, do we have any other questions on this application? We pretty much reviewed it multiple times. Yeah. Um, if Steve, anything else? No, do, do you have a, Jeff, do you have a timeline on what, what your next steps are with the other boards and committees or? Um, so we have a planning board meeting, you know, this Wednesday um oh good so I think 
they're going to continue discussions there um, with the planning board. Um, again, we'll have to kind of table the stormwater stuff until the review comes in, but uh, we'd like to kind of tidy up all the remaining uh, items with the board, uh, if possible, to try to just leave that piece for last. So the when it comes to the, you know, the plan, typically we, you know, plan board usually oversee or reviews stormwater also. And they have the, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, the, the design is up to the planning board or site plan review. And a lot of it's outside the jurisdiction. So I don't want to get caught in a situation where plan, I want to make sure planning board is plan is pretty much substantially complete. That's getting reviewed for stormwater. Um, there's a lot of work maybe in the front off of Oak street. There might be some changes. Um, so, and a lot of that, some of that stuff might be outside of the jurisdiction of the commission that, and the stormwater might be tied to it or might not be. So um, if, if you can talk at the meeting, I guess if we in front of planning board that like Tracy said, we want one cohesive plan when they're reviewing it. So I'm not sure how far along you were with site plan review. Yeah, I mean, we already, uh, like I said, we, we issued a response letter to Bill, Bill's uh, initial letter. So we, we addressed all the comments made to date as part of the site plan review process. Um, the only, I mean, there's really no substantive edits to the plans at this point. It's just the set of plans we have with the current calc, set of calcs, which the, you know, I think it's the April 3rd was the date of the plans. That's the last plan that we issued. We are gonna make one minor change, which was a, a request by one of the abutters to shift the emergency spillway for the south uh, easterly basin, which was basin number three. Um, it's basically just taking it and shifting it along the basin berm to the very kind of southern ed end of that berm. And that was just to basically make sure that we're sending water away from, uh, I think the trail that she has in her yard that's that leads down to her home. So we wanna make sure that all the water is going away from that area. The, the primary outlet of that basin is already kind of aimed uh, in the southwesterly or southeasterly direction. So we wanna be consistent with that. So other than that, I guess that's good because my I guess my point is I don't we want to make sure that you know they don't come back and the stormwater is reviewed and then there's a you know a semi big change in site plan and then we got to send it through the consultant all over again. So we, we prefer to have a almost the final plan that's all they're waiting for is stormwater review by both boards. If mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I think. I think we we definitely have that. I mean, there's okay, nothing. I just want you to clarify and make sure you have it. Yeah, no, I have. Out. Yeah, exactly. I have my like little lists, and the idea is that I'll just I'll make those things when we get the review comments back from Stormwater. We'll just say, oh, by the way, we also did this, and then everything will be done and addressed, and we'll just have it all one final clean kind of plan set. Okay, great. Okay, so Steve, you have the final, final, latest, greatest plan that you can send to PAR, or how this, how's this going to go? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll touch base with Jeff's. Jeff, I, I don't know if you want to redo a uh, Google Drive that I could send to him. It's the same. It's the same information I sent to you a couple weeks. Okay, it hasn't ago. changed. Nope, it hasn't changed. It's all okay. the same plan. So that, Gotta double check, Jeff. Okay. Yeah, no, no, it's the same. I mean, I'd like to double check. We'll have them review that, and then whatever changes they ha come out of the review, we'll just do one final revision, and hopefully, be done. Beautiful. Okay. I have June first okay. at seven thirty. Open. Yeah, I'm gonna just open it to the public. Um, what was that date and time? June for June first at seven thirty a.m. and p.m. Okay. All right. Um, at this time, any. One of the audience have any questions in regards to this application at seven o'clock for 45 Oak? How do you? Uh, Hang on, let me unmute. Charla, crawl. Crawl, just have, unmute your phone or your or your computer. Oh. oh, can you hear us? Yeah. Sorry, we're a little trouble learning how to use it. That's okay. Name and address, please. Uh, Charlotte Kroll, 78 Tory Road, Sutton, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, when do you write up the order conditions? I'm sorry, what? 
the order of conditions when they write it up yeah okay because i'm interested in invasive species you know i didn't see any verbiage on that we are expecting ver this is Stephen Kroll, 78 Tory Road. We are expecting verbiage that would allow Blue Wave to uh, manage the invasive species within the wetlands area. Okay. In so, the order and conditions, and we didn't see that. Well, we we haven't drafted the order of conditions yet. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Right. Okay. We'll do so, but Jeff, you're aware of that? I. I believe, yeah, I believe that there were discussions, and and I don't know if uh, what you know, Blue Wave uh, can elaborate on the discussions of invasives management, um, kind of so, along that property line there. Um, yeah, sure thing. I can expand upon that a little bit. This is Matt Parlon with Blue Wave. Um, so we've been in conversation with Mr. And Mrs. Kroll for um, the duration of this hearing, and um, on our eastern property bound. Uh, just in one of the few wetland areas on our site, um, this abuts their property. And for our project, you know, we we have no uh, reason to go within that area. Um, but she had requested that the Conservation Commission allow us to go in that area so that we can um, manage some invasive species that have been growing up in that area and onto her property. Um, and we'd be happy to allocate some funds to do so if uh, the Conservation Commission um, wished to allow us that passage. It's not really a, um, a necessity of, of the uh, project, but just a, a butter request that we're happy to work with. Uh, Matthew, if you just want to type up, uh, you want to send, you know, when time comes, send me a, a, some verbiage. And uh, usually if our special, special conditions, we put them right on the first page, page 1A, that we can, you can add that worded to the, to the, to the order of conditions and have everybody look at it, have you look at it, have the butters look at it, if you're amenable. Sounds like you guys have a little agreement. The commission likes it, and then we can add it to the order of conditions. Yeah, I'd be happy to draft that up. Okay, anyone else in the audience have any questions or concerns on this item? Entertain a motion to continue. Um, uh, sorry, Tracy, I just had yeah. one one logistical question. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you for the movement to uh, proceed with Parcorp. Um, would you like us to reach out to them to kick things off, or is that something that uh, Steve will be uh, get in motion? I'll send the I'll send the original email out um, tomorrow, with and then ask them if they want to contact Jeff and yourself. So that'd be yeah, that'd be fine. But let me let me send the email first. All right, great, thank you. Okay. Anyone else have any other questions? So I'll entertain a motion to continue uh, 45 Oak to June 1st at 7.30 p.m. So moved. Move. Second. So moved by Katie Gray, second by Art. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Katie Grace, can I hand the meeting over to you right now for the next two hearings? Well, three hearings actually. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, and I will be back. Okay. All right, so we're looking at what, uh, 7 15 p.m. NOI DEP 143 public hearing for Southwest Main Street, Lot 1, uh, George Hendrick. So I'm going to open up this folder, and this is a public hearing. And I've lost the share drive. Uh, let me, uh, I'll bring it up for you. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to start out reading the public hearing. Uh, Douglas Conservation Commission Notice of Public Hearing, uh, Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. The Douglas Conservation Commission will hold the public hearing on May 11, 2020, 7 15 p.m., for notice of intent filed by George Hendricks for the construction of a single family dwelling located at Lot 1, Southwest Main Street. A portion of the work will occur within the 100 foot buffer zone to wetlands. Public participation will be very virtual means only pursuant to Governor Baker's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. And the governor's March 15 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that can gather in one place. This meeting of the Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation. 
Uh, it provides the link for remote meetings. Uh, website for meeting has been provided by the conservation agenda posted to the town's website at least 48 hours prior to the date. All right, this is published in the Worcester Telegram and Gazette on May 1st, 2020. All right, so I've got a copy of the colored plan if we want to bring that up. Okay, let me uh, see if I can do that. And I know this plan has been in existence for a bit, but this is the first time I've seen it. Maybe this, this may be the first time a number of those of us in the meeting have seen it. Um, so it might be nice to go over some of the details in this plan. Is the, um, can you see the plan? Can you see the plan now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Um, I don't know if there's a locust map. Let me let me zoom into the locust map so I can show everybody where this property is. Can you see this? So if, if you're coming down uh, from the from the old common and then you want to go to Wallam Lake Park, you take this left here. But if you go straight, you got a bad luck pond on the right on your way to Connecticut. And right after bad luck pond, there's a uh, I guess, I guess a couple of parcels here, right about here, that they're looking to put uh, lot one and lot two, they carved out of this parcel area. And so, is the applicant from engineers, Linda, are you here from uh, Andrew's survey? No, it's Jude from Andrew's survey. Jude. Oh. Jude, yes. Welcome, Hi, Jude. Jude. Hi, I'm new. <laughs> is that, did you, did you get my uh, email? I sent an email to Linda. She never responded about the uh, peer review proposal. Um, I am in receipt of that as of five o'clock tonight, yes, but I have read it. Okay, oh, that, you only got it tonight? Okay, because I was wondering, I uh, sent it to her about two weeks ago and it was strange I never got a response. So I resent it today. Well, it seemed pretty basic. I read through it, so it, I mean, so if you want to, first of all, here's the colored plan. If you kind of want to give an overview to the commission, and I'll try to uh, um, sure. give an explanation um, before I get into my comments. So these two parcels were created from an original property owned by Aaron Socret. And um, the proposal in front of you, the applicant is George Hendricks, who is interested in developing these two lots that were generated from an a and plan that was done some time ago. Um, the, the, there's two parcels here. We can discuss the first one now because I know the other hearings later after this one. But basically- Yeah, let's do that. There's a floodplain that, run, that ran through the area. I think he's got it highlighted in magenta near the V in the wetland, the green wetland line. Yep, uh, down right there. So that is the old floodplain line. And through the process of um, dealing with the flood insurance agencies and FEMA, we have actually asked for them to remove this, the portion of the parcel. And it's in a, it's right where the hand is. It's like a dashed line. And it's the second group of magenta text. That line right there. So that line right there on the inside of it to the south of it, that's all has been removed from the floodplain elevation. So that is technically buildable as far as flood insurance, the rate maps go. So what you also see is the green line, which delineates the wetland line. And then you have a, a couple of different lines. You have the 25 foot orange line closest to the green, and then a 50 foot buffer zone is the second orange line away from the green. So basically we had to get creative with the construction of the dwelling between the, the floodplain, the septic system, the wetlands and the driveway. So there's a 50 foot um, front setback line that's pretty much right at the building face. And then the orange line kind of encompasses the no building zone, the 50 foot no building zone. So what we did is the first, in order to get the septic system in and the house in, and keep in mind, this house is about 1800 square feet without a garage, um, may possible for a drive under on the right hand side, but they're relatively small, modest houses. They're not these big uh, giant, you know, 3,500 square foot house. 
And basically, we had to deal with the setbacks that were were left over after applying all the jurisdictional limits and the zoning limits. So we have a septic in the front yard that takes up some space, and then we have the dwelling. The front of the dwelling, in order for the building in the septic to be so close, we had to, we're going to pour a slab in the front of the building so that the septic can only be 10 feet away from the, the front of the house. And then the back portion will be full basement. Um, we stayed out of the buffers, uh, the, the floodplain line, because we were shoehorned into the, the 50 foot buffer and the 50 foot setback. So there isn't any compensatory storage proposed or any fl fl fill filling of the floodplain or anything like that. Um, there's a driveway that comes in on the right held up by a retaining wall. And there's a turnaround at the end so you don't have to back straight out onto the road. Um, aside from that, there's a well located on the back. It's so far away from it because you have to be 100 feet from the wet, uh, from the septic system. So it's kind of pinched in between the two, um, the convergence of the wetland line itself. But we'll, we'll put erosion control back there and our hopes is to only go back there once, drill it, dig the water line and restore that back to kind of a, a buffer zone type of deal. Um, Steve, just for the record, I'm back. Okay, great. 727. So I guess uh, some of the, uh, issues, um, well, not issues, but um, before I couldn't really, uh, before we go out and I, I could really um, make comments on the structures and the dwelling itself, um, there's some technical stuff that we wanted to, would, I w would like to get addressed. One of them was the commission sent us out for peer review. Yes. Tech, which is, uh, I think was pretty reasonable price on both lots, um, which would be, if, uh, and you know, I sent it off to uh, Linda a couple of weeks ago. You know, so the applicant would know that you know they would have to uh, submit a check for if they don't have any issues with using EchoTech or the pricing that they would uh, you know cover the cost of that re peer review. Um, two, the plan itself um, is is more of a board of health plan, so it's it's hard to it's hard to see the uh you should have a, another at least a second sheet that shows the entire wetlands that can with flags at a suitable scale that we can review um right now a lot of the you can't see any of the flags that are associated with the project um on this plan specifically you know stuff on on the left side um, i so agree that that's one of them. I mean, if you want to keep this, you know, this 10 scale, it's fine, but a 20 scale, 40 scale, something that we can see um, the entire resource area. So we send it out to the consultant and ourselves, we can review it. So that's one. Um, two, the wetland, the, the floodplain boundary was actually, you got to prove, you got a chain floodplain map boundary line, or you, you got a Loma or you letter just we well, got yes. a letter of map amendment. I just, it didn't, it wasn't included in the notice of intent. I have it. I can give you copies. So did you guys go out and do a flight plan study? We went out, yeah, we went out and did a, um, an elevation study and based on another one around the lake, there's an elevate, th that line basically follows the 664 elevation. And we got FEMA to agree that the 664 elevation is the the floodplain elevation right well that that information we'll have to have that for the record so so that and then the um there was no wetland delineation documentation uh, field, field data forms forms at all i see on the plan it was done by civil site survey in 2018 um are those, are the, those are the original flags from when they flagged it or did you guys go back out and rehang the flags no we we went out and located those flags so those, are the, those are the flags from the original survey. Yes. Do you have Do you have the uh, delineation documentation we we can submit so we can send, hand, hand that off to the consultant? I am. I'm looking, I looked in the folder today for it at my in my office and I did not see it. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But um, when I got this, the comments from you, I went looking for that. I believe Aaron um, Socrat had engage them to go out and do the wetland delineation. So maybe he has it or we can contact them for the data sheets. 
but we will we'll, we'll work on getting those. Okay, and then so that and then the uh, a street number for each lot. We'll, yeah, they haven't issued one yet. Right. Can uh, you can you hear me, Steve? Yeah, I do have that. Um, uh, name and address, please. Because I'm yeah. sorry, it's Aaron. So we should wait until it's public okay. comment. I'm sorry. You are the owner. Now. Right, so so the peer review, so you know, it's very sensitive area, as you know, Bad Luck Pond, and you know, it's it's part of the biomap um, area. So it would be good to you know um, to have um, Equitech go out there, review the resource areas, and you know, to make sure that everything's accurate. Some of the flags, maybe because it's ten scale, they look they look a little far apart. Um, so once the delineation and the resource area is confirmed then we can come back and take another look i can start reviewing the structures itself i hate to do that now when the flags might change um and hopefully they don't but if they do then you know all that review is for not so i'd like to have that solidified before we go ahead and and start reviewing the, um, the house the well some of the grading and the septic seems appropriate did you, did you have to get board of health approval on the on the septic Yes. And, 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 okay, for the future, so. and for the future reference, I had to color up the plans myself. So it, if we can't, it's, it's, Rich's phone, can you please mute your phone? Everyone that's um, not on the board should have their phone muted. Okay. Please. So that's where we stand right now. So that's about basically about the end of my comments until we get the peer review done. Okay. So um, anyone have any questions or comments about this public hearing? Katie Grace, I'll just take it back over for now. <laughs> Suppose. You did a great um, job, board, Katie Grace. Thank you. Board, <laughs> any um, questions before I open it up, actually? No. Art, no. Mike? No, no. Paul? No. no. All right, no. Yeah, I was just going to, um, we said we could have a, a better wetlands drawing with the wetlands more clear. I, I found the driveway and the erosion control. There's a retaining wall. I was just going to comment um, that the two buffers that are shown are the 50 and the 25. The 100 is not shown here. Everything's within everything's within the 100, essentially. The 100 is in the street on the bottom okay. beyond the, yeah, so the whole entire lot. And I feel like, and maybe this is just me, I feel like the drawing, oh, there's the 100. OK, now I can see it in the bottom left corner. Because I feel like the, based on the yeah. locust map, I feel like this map should be a little bit further towards the bottom. I guess if there's nothing to show there, that's fine. Yeah, I agree. That's why I said they need a better suitable scale to be able to see the scope of the entire parcels. Okay, yeah. And I think if they showed, if they had a nice scale that showed both lots together with all the, you see the one in the green that in the, in the, yep. in the overview block, mm -hmm. if they had a plan that could show all the resource areas with the flag, a little bit more detailed you know it's okay if they use two or three different sheets but you're right it's it's blown up so much and you can't really get the perspective of where you are with you know with the floodplain and and because everything is just kind of just poking out of the corners of of the plan yeah you, i think you said it for at the very beginning that i, I had my uh, board of health hat on septic design hat on when i did the, the scale of the plan but i could certainly do an all-around encompassing plan of both lots showing them together in all the jurisdictional limits that'd be great yeah yeah i appreciate that no the more i looked at it today I, I noticed the same thing so and then as far as the local bylaw goes you're going into the 25 correct with the some of the driveway a small right so um you know, Steve, do we want a letter stating, you know, that you can overcome our bylaw or? Yeah, I can take a look at that. I think driveways is 10 feet, but I'll have to look. Okay. At yeah. Okay. With a presumption. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, but yeah. I really didn't get into the the review of any of that. Uh, the, the technical stuff. Okay. Technical okay. stuff until we sorted out the floodplain and the resource area. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, so, anyone? I, um, yeah. I actually do have kind of one technical procedural question. Yeah. Probably mostly for my own edification. Um, but I noticed on the application, uh, the notice of intent. There's a check mark that says that the um, is check if the project's located only in the buffer zone of a bordering vegetated wetland, et cetera. And then below that is buffer zone and resource area impacts, and there's no notifications or descriptions at all in that area of the notice of intent application uh, regarding what the disruptions of the wetland area would be. um let me just go to the page are you saying for so it's buffer zone only so the resource areas are the actual bvw so there's nothing to be filled in under um the continuation of b okay yeah so if you were not buffer zone only that's just the name of it it's kind of confusing they're not crossing or filling the wetlands. So like, let's just say for instance, if it was the actual resource area, the bordering vegetated wetland, they would say, how much are they impacting, you know, going to the zero beyond the zero. And then they would do a replication. Okay. So they're outside of the actual resource area, but I can see, so it's a continuation of the next page. It's just a little misleading on the wording because it's like the top buffer zone resource area impacts mm -hmm. the title. Okay. So we're outside the resource area. That's why nothing's listed. You know what page you're talking about? What? I have it on the screen. Is it on the two screen? And, two and three? Page three. Page two, page three? Yep. Section B. Yeah, so it's buffer zone work only. Is that you? So that means that there's no work in the, in the resource area itself. So if they were working in the resource area, which these are resource areas, if they're crossing a stream, uh, a bank, or if they're actually filling in uh, the wetlands itself, then they would, they would put in these boxes how much work they're actually disturbing. And then if they're disturbing a thousand square feet of uh, the wetlands, they would have to replicate that. Okay. But because they checked off where it's just buffer zone, where they're, they're not within those flags, where the flags are, are located. They're not going into there. So they're, uh, it's, just, it's just buffer zone work. Yeah, it's a little tricky. Okay, board, any other questions? Yes, I have a question. Can um, you hear me? Are you on the board, Michael Hughes? <laughs> no, I'm, a, okay. I'm on a butter. Okay, board members, anybody have any other questions? No. Nope. Okay. All right, hearing none. Okay, uh, Michael Hughes, name and address, please, for the record. Michael Hughes, 354 Southwest Main Street. Yes. We live almost directly across from lot one. Has conservation ever walked that land? Not right. yet. Not yet. I, I, I'm gonna see a lot of water over there. There's a culvert right down the street. Yeah. And we have wetlands that run through our land and we're gonna have a guarantee that they won't back that up if they build two houses over there. We thought it was all non-buildable land. Right. So once we get into the technical review and we're also having a third party consultant review the wetlands, then we'll have more information and there will be a revised plan too, to show um, yeah. everything like, over there. Like I say, we have the, quite a bit of wetlands on our land and we certainly don't want it flooding. We've been here for 20 years and we've never had any trouble with water. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, you know, I understand. Yeah. yeah, and when the time comes, um, is it Jude, Jude from Andrews? Jude, Jay? Jude. yep. Yeah, that would be nice. Cause when I went out there, it's 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 a little difficult finding exactly the the area. So, you know, it looks like there was, just, all, all that's remaining is some um, test pitting. Yep. So we'll need to have everything marked out and staked out when the time comes to do a proper yeah. site evaluation. Yeah, we actually went down and looked at the two lots and we couldn't figure out how there was enough room to even build the houses over there. 
but we couldn't figure out how they could build them here when we built bought, built here too. So, I mean, we had more open land though. Well, the, all we're worried about is the water backing up on our property across yeah. the street. You know, because there's actually a small brook that runs on the very backside of our lot. It runs right across the street. It almost yep. runs year round. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna check it all out and. Um... You know, you'll have more opportunity to take a look at um, the plans a little more closely okay, with the thank revisions. You thank you. Yep. Um, anyone else in the audience have any questions in regards to this lot one? Okay, see none, Steve. So we'll just, uh, uh, first off, uh, no objection from um, the applicant or his engineer that we go ahead and uh, make a vote to uh, approve the consultant to do a peer review. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to that effect. So moved. And second. Second is uh, motion made by Paul, second by Art. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Everyone except for Mark Mungum. Okay. And then, um, Steve, that's good, right? Yeah, that's okay. good. So we can continue it. Yeah, we'll get our Alan the plans and all that. All right, he has them already. Yep. Okay. But if you can, uh, if Andrews could send the updated plan and then the um, field data sheets, um, that'd be great. We so will do that. I'll, I'll wait to get that before I give him the word to go ahead. So he has all the latest information and any uh, FEMA flood paint plan information you might have. I will send it all along. Yes. Okay. Thanks. And if it's if it's a large document, if you want to do a shared drive or something, that'd be great. Okay. Seven, June first, seven forty-five. I'll make a. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, make a motion to continue Southwest Main Street Lot One um, to June first at seven forty-five. Second. Motion is made and seconded by Mike Burko. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Okay, next one, very similar. Um, Steve, you're ready, right? Yep, let me bring it okay. up. Here All go. right, I get it. Uh, Town of Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on May 11th. 2020 at 7 30 p.m. for a notice of intent filed by George Hendricks for the construction of a single family dwelling located at lot two southwest main street a portion of the work will occur within the 100 foot buffer zone to the wetlands public participation will be via virtual means only pursuant to governor baker's march 12 2020 order superseding or suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Douglas Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation. The public may participate in this meeting via remote participation with the link included. A website for the meeting will be provided on the conservation agenda posted on the town's website at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Copies of the notice of intent may be examined electronically by contacting Maria LaJoy at mlajoy at douglasma.org. Uh, meeting ID 895-1613-9549. One tap on the mobile. And for information about the Zoom platform, you can go to the Town of Douglas website and to be published one time in the May 1st, 2020 issue. Um, so that was interesting. So <laughs> this lot is next to the last lot. Yeah, is, um, my, is my plan showing? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, Steve's got it pulled up. And Jude, do you like to take over? Yes. Again, for the record, my name is Jude Govin from Andrews Survey and Engineering. I'm here representing Aaron Sokrat and George Hendricks. Aaron Sokrat is the owner of the land. He has subdivided it or parceled it off as an approval not required plan to create a second lot um, as a buildable lot. Similar to the 
the previous plan on lot one, we have the wetlands as a jurisdictional limit, a floodplain, and we have uh, a letter of map amendment for this lot also that pretty much excludes everything above the 664, I believe it is. Yeah, 664 um, elevation. Um, again, I, I think we're going to have the similar things. It's going to be the peer review, like Steve said, and um, he hasn't looked at any technical stuff, but basically we did the same thing with this one. We got a little creative with the foundations. There's some crawl, there's some slab, there's some basement. There's actually some open area to below so that we're not filling any floodplain. Um, the well is is down to the, the west and towards the wetlands. And um, the septic is pretty much cradled up next to the house with a driveway um, with a retaining wall on the left-hand side. And I mean, it's pretty much the same as the other one. So it's, it's the same stuff. And again, I know the scale of this is, is not conducive to looking at it conservation wise, but it looks mm -hmm. great for a septic system. So pretty much all the comments are the same for this one. I I'll believe so. Comments. They are. Yeah. We'll get it reviewed by the uh, third party, by Acotech. Mm -hmm. We'll get the new plan. Yep. Um, board, any specific questions on this one, or do we want to wait till we get the information? The I, have, plan? I have one on the notice of intent paperwork. Um, just, I'm confused. <laughs> Um, I seeing a couple of different outlines on various pages in the notice of intent, and I'm specifically looking at the one page that basically has a large yellow area, um, and then a larger red area that looks like it's covering lots one and two and going to the edge of Laurel Lake, or Bad Luck Lake, whichever it is. Uh, unfortunately, there's no page number. Um, Let's see. Is that in the notice of intent itself? Yeah, it's in the, it's in the notice of intent. I'm um, looking at it from your Google Drive. Actually, it comes up saying page 20 of 29 when I that, click on pop, it. Is that popping up on the screen? Yeah, just uh, keep going down. Oh, that one. Whoop, whoop, up. <laughs> that one. All right, so that's the... Uh, so. Anytime someone files a, a notice of intent and it needs to have a public hearing, which this is a public hearing and advertising the paper, you have to notify so many people in a certain radius. I, I believe it's within a hundred foot radius or maybe 500 foot radius of the parcel. What is it? 300. 300, sorry. So 300. So the red is the parcel that, um, that they have. And so this is the assessors. They go to the town assessors and assessors will automatically draw on their computer, generate all parcels within 300 feet of the property that's coming before the board or the commission and highlight those. Okay. And then when he highlights them, the applicant has to send certified notification that they're having a public hearing to all those abutters within 300 feet of the property. And so this is what we call the abutters list that they have to supply this to make sure that all these people were notified, which brings up a good question. Did you submit the green cards? We sent them over by email this, this afternoon. This afternoon, okay. So we'll check those and, and if there's any missing, um, you'll have to re-notify those people at the next meeting. It, the, the reason that concerned me is because I was looking at the uh, wetland and wetland change area map from MassDEP and yep. the estimated habitats of rare wildlife. Yep. And that section, Parcel two, looking at that diagram of it, uh, does cross what DEP has marked as an apparent wetland limit, and it also uh, goes into an area that is marked as estimated habitat of rare wildlife. Right. So we that's that's and it, you know there's a biomap. Uh, I, I submitted a biomap to parcel, this area is just, you know, considered to be a sensitive area also. So when you go on a DEP website, um, mass GIS, and you see like the wetlands that are shown, those are all estimated 
uh, wetland areas. So any area that you see from MassGIS or the DEP website are all in theory, um, they're, they're, they're just ballpark. Uh, Steve, he's talking about the estimated habitat for the natural heritage. So yeah. was natural heritage notified for, of this filing? If there's a layer that is showing up as estimated, um, Jude? Um, the answer is no habitat was not notified, but I would like to ask, is he talking about the habitat line touching that buffer zone or touching the solid red? Uh, touching the solid red, the habitat line is at the edge of, actually it looks like that yellow line that you've got right there on the screen, Steve. The yellow line next to the uh, water right in that area, I think that lines up with the habitat. Correct. So we did not notify them because that's further away than okay, our Okay, because that, that other drawing made it look like it went all the way up to the edge of the water. So going right through that area behind those other 321, 315. Yes. Yeah, I was surprised it wasn't in the estimated habitat given the, this, the, the, how this area was uh, designated sensitive area one time. But so I think everything where it says PH 825 over here to the left, that's the estimated habitat area. Yeah, so I think everything to the left of this line, yellow line, and everything to the right of it over here is in the habitat area, and then there's right. a little wedge in between. Correct me if I'm wrong. That is outside of it. So this area, I think, is technically outside of the estimated habitat. Right. That does look like it is outside the area. It's it was that other page that you know I saw this drawing, and then I mm -hmm. saw the other page, and that's yeah, so kind of where I was confused as to exactly what the extent of. Right, so this, this page represents the habitat. The other page represented the abutters you have to notify within 300 okay. feet. And, and if, if I want to go back, the, this was so, so this, this is such high, and, and this because this is one big giant parcel, 22-227-13. Is why this whole area is, is highlighted in yellow is because it's one big parcel or an unknown parcel. Okay. So because it clipped it, and if it was 100 acres, the whole thing would light up yellow because it's part of that one parcel that clips the property. Right. Yeah, it's just, it's like that the way that red goes all the way over to the shore of the lake, that's where I wasn't sure what that red solid red indicated if that was going to be developed area or not developed. Yeah, well, that's a good I point. So, so, the prop, is it, so the property is within the estimated habitat area. The original part, I see where the confusion is now. The solid red that we're looking at on the screen now is the whole property before it was parceled off by Aaron. So the, the parcel on the right hand side, that's his where his house is, and that's the land that he's keeping. Basically, okay. where the H in Southwest is, that's where the lot two is. But the assessors didn't update the property lines yet. So when we requested the abutters list, it actually took a conservative view and it took the whole entire parcel. So it made the whole entire parcel red. And then it projected out its 300 foot radius from there. Since this was submitted, I believe that they've updated the lines for it. So if we had to request an abutters list today, it would only include lot two, which would be a much smaller area in the center of that word southwest. So I do see by looking at that map with that red handle on the right hand side mm -hmm. that's Aaron's actual that's where his house is and that's where he lives so he is in the habitat area but the parcels that we're discussing are not okay I definitely see where how you get confused with that because it's not it's misleading. no I was just it was comparing that one with the others that I just yeah. didn't know which one was the you know which one was real yep it's because like I said the but the assessors hadn't updated it yet so they took okay. the whole parcel so we had to notify more butters than we probably needed to. <laughs> um, so you're saying none of the lot 
is falling under. If you go back to that habitat map that um, Steve had up, mm -hmm. the, I see that it's, I have it all, all over, pulled up. Yeah, okay, right, yeah. all right, you've got it. Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing too. Okay. All right. Paul, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Okay. Okay. Um, anyone else on the board have any questions or comments? No. Nope. Okay. Just the same same thing with the vote. I mean, I was just gonna comment on the scale of the map again. Same as yeah. other lot. Okay, yeah. We're gonna get a new plan. And approval to send it out to peer review. Okay. Would someone like to make a motion on that? A move. To send it out for peer review to Echo Tech to do the um the review of the wetland line. Uh, okay. Make a motion okay. to. Well, Art, make the motion. Do you want a second, Paul? Oh, yeah, second, sure. Okay. All right. So Art's made the motion. Paul, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, everyone unanimous and Mark is absent. So, okay. Steve, you have any other questions? No, thank you. Okay. All right, um, I'm going to recuse myself from the next hearing, the um, 7.45 hearing. Are we going to continue this? Oh, yeah, sorry. All right, nice yeah. job. I was just about that, that Art. Good job. <laughs> Uh, we're going to move this to June 1st at 8, 8 p.m. Okay, I'll make a motion that we continue Southwest Main Street, Lot 2, to June 1st at 8 p.m. Okay, motion to the main. Second. Seconded. Second by Katie Grace. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much, Art. No problem. Okay. Thank um, you. I'm going to recuse myself, and Katie Grace, you want to... Yes. Take over. This is a new hearing. So you have to read that. Okay, absolutely. Uh, 7:45 p.m. NOI uh, DP 143 Taco. This is a public hearing for 93 Davis Street under 93 Davis Realty Trust. Um, opening up. There we go. I bet on the screen too. If you need. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. All right, so the public notice, 93 Davis Street, Douglas Conservation Commission, notice a public hearing pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. The Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on May 11, 2020, at 7.45 p.m. for a notice of intent filed by the 93 Davis Realty Trust for work located at 93 Davis Street. Construction of a 30-foot by 112-foot retail cannabis establishment with associated site work and drainage within the 100 foot buffer of an intermittent stream. Public participation will be via virtual means only pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th order and the Governor's March 15th order imposing strict limitation on the number of people who may gather. This meeting of the Conservation Douglas Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation. The public may participate via this in this meeting via remote participation at the link we're in at the link provided. A website for the meeting will be provided on the conservation agenda posted on the town's website at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Copies of the notice of intent may be examined electronically by contact Jailing Marie Le G. Le Joy and um, her, ad, uh, her email address. And uh, the meeting ID and the phone number are provided in both this uh, public notice as well as in the agenda. And uh, there's information about Zoom meetings if anybody needs some. So this was published in the Worcester Telegram and Gazette on Friday, the 1st of May. Excellent. Hi, good evening. Good evening. My name is Karen Keegan. I'm from Guaranteed Builders and I'm here representing 93 uh, Davis Street Trust. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Let me, I'm gonna get, I've got the Google Drive open so I can see these files and we've got, okay, I wanted one, at least one of them up in the Zoom meeting. Okay, is this uh, is what you're looking at what you wanted to talk to, Karen? Yes. Thank you. Uh, actually, that's um, something else. That's a marked up plan that is not mine. Oh, 
uh, Steve, is this what you wanted? So I have 93 Davis Street. So maybe you can give a little history that so there's I have both plans on the screen. I have the old plan and then the new plan. And so maybe a little history of the property. Sure. So this property um, at one time was permitted for an NOI back in 2009 and approved and site work was conducted, uh, but the building was never put in. Uh, they had cleared some of the lot, um, and uh, it is shown on one of the plans, I don't think it's that one there, um, that the lot had been cleared up to a certain amount. Um, yeah. And we have now filed a certificate of compliance on that particular order that was issued. Um, we have now coming in front of the commission again. Uh, this is a totally different building with a totally different filing and, and the applicant is different also. So um, why don't we stop it right there? So because it, it has a, the old site had a little work on it. Um, let's see if I can bring up a video of it. Can anyone see that? No. No. All right, hang on one second. How about now? There you yep. go. Yep. Oh, much better. All right, yep. so this so this is at when you're leaving this the Route 16 and heading towards Uxbridge. Um, this is Pat. You go right past the school. As you go past the school, about a half mile on the right, you have Monroe on the right, and then right behind the corner of Monroe and Route 16, you have this vacant lot. Okay. Okay. Mm. And this was cleared for another project with a previous, you know, completely but different separate project. Yeah, do yeah. you remember that it's that plan on the left when I bring it back up? Okay. Um, they started the earth work. They put the well in down to the left. Um, and this is not as far as they ever got. Yeah. So in the presentation you are showing where you have Plans showed on the left and the right. The old site plan is what the clearing was for. That's right. Which, which okay. is on the left. Yeah. So what you're presenting is the plan that's on the right. Yes. All right. So I walked on it just so you can see the well that was installed. Oh. It was about what they did. They did the well and then the, then the clearing. Okay. Yeah. And so the old plan, when you notice the how they you have that embankment to the right, everything was that was as far as they were going. The new okay. plan, the new plan, and some of my concerns as we go through the look into the new plan, that embankment where I pop out of the woods, they plan on taking the, the old plan, they they stayed out of the 50 foot, and even where that embankment is up there, they're about 55 feet away. The new plan, they're they're going within 25 feet of the stream. It goes further back. Okay. It goes further towards the stream. All right. Closer to the stream. The building itself, though, is out of the 50 foot buffer. Understood. There's grading, there's grading up to the 25 foot buffer, including a retaining wall, a small three and a half foot retaining wall to, you know, keep the erosion on uh, from coming down the side of the hill. So is this is the the hay bales you have there now? Is that twenty five feet, or I think that's a little bit farther. I'm not sure if those were placed in the correct area. No, that was twenty five feet. So they'll be grading up to the erosion controls now. Yes. Where the old plan was up into the area that was excavated. Yes. Okay. And so just so that you kind of get an idea what the site looks like. Roughly at that area, especially the embankments, like they were cut at the, the uh, limited disturbance previous. Okay. So the building that they're proposing is a little bit smaller, uh, square yeah. footage wise. It's to be placed in, um, in a perpendicular can, um, position to the street uh, for safety reasons. Uh, they don't want people parking behind the building. Um, all the parking is to be to the side of the building, uh, in front of the building, but not to the back of the building. And for safety reasons, that's one of the reasons why they want it like that. Um, they don't want anybody to be able to park behind the building. Um, 
Uh, let's see. Um, the storm water, can I address some of the storm water issues? The storm water will be taken care of on site. Um, there is a storm water area on site. I know you can't see it on these plans that are in front of you. Do we have a plan that would show that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah can we pull that up? Is it Karen? No, nope, next one. Yep, there it is. See that little bunch of little squares right there? Those would be the, the drainage area with the filtration system in that drain manhole that goes into it for any kind of um, so, so you explain to them like there is, it's not a it's not on above ground, it's below this it's below ground. Yes. Underneath it's the all, excuse me? Underneath the parking lot. Yes. So that's where the drainage is to, to be put, is underneath the parking lot. Uh, the traffic flow is one way in around the, the back of the, the, the skinny end of the back of the building and out onto Route 16. So there's a flow of traffic in and out and around, going around the building. Um, the post, there's a proposed concrete wall, I, as I said, in the back, and that would be along the 25 foot buffer. It is a three foot, a three and a half foot um, concrete wall. And um, that is an intermittent stream with no BVW associated with it. That's bank. Is the stormwater being reviewed by the planning board? Uh, yes, it's going out to bid with the planning board right at the moment for in, um, for review. They haven't picked anybody yet, as far as I know. So right off the bat, some of my concerns is that the original plan had you know lot less work towards the resource area, and you, you know they were you had a little bit room more room I don't know to utilize towards the well. Um, to lessen the impact of clearing that area, but it is, there is like Karen said, it's a distinct bank. So there's no BBW. It's just, all you have is the stream. There's no wetlands associated with the stream. Does the commission have any questions? Not now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just quick question. Um, sure. Is that there's kind of like a fence around the parking lot as well? Uh, there's a fence around the parking lot? Yes, like guardrail. Back, yes, in the back. Okay. And then how much, how much pavement do you have on there? Square foot of pavement? Yeah. Um, I am not sure. That's a question okay. I can answer at the moment. Understood. So it's going to the site plan review and um, you get a little bit more detailed comments from, is that the only plan, the relevant plan sheet? Yes. Um, Anyway, so there's no way of keeping the keeping the limit of disturbance this how it was approved back in 2009. Uh, no, because they want the flow to go behind the building and come, go in and out of there. And if the flow is if is that, is that if the, the limit is, is pushed towards the building, you wouldn't be able to make that. In yeah. fact, is that um, the, town, the town that wants that. I don't. May I think I interject here. I, my name is Teresa. I have part of this land. Um, I'm partner with V and T. And the reason why this building has to go perpendicular yeah, to the road is for safety. Um, when, according to the CCC, what you need is you have to be able to see the whole building in one shot. 
as the police go by, if it's 100 feet long, that means people can hide behind the building. You have to be able to flow in and out and keep everything moving at all times and have safety, safety, safety. And that's why the building's been turned. We do know that um, we're, within the, we're within the zone of um, the ordinances that you have. And we are going back before the planning board on the 13th to have peer review. We're going to decide on who's going to be the peer review on the 13th this Wednesday. But the most important thing about the way this building has been designed is the safety so that at any time you can see completely around this building. And that is, um, it's not from the town, it's actually from the CCC. Hey, I'm um, sorry, there was just a little bit of noise when you started speaking. Can you please identify yourself again? My name is Teresa, and it's Teresa and Saban who are the partners in owning this land and doing this, this business that we have an HCA with the, the town of Douglas. Awesome, thank you. Well, thanks for the explanation. Um, I appreciate it. I was just, I wasn't sure of the reason behind it. Yeah. No, I appreciate oh, it. Oh, no, I understand that. That's why I chimed in so you understand why it has to go perpendicular and not horizontal, uh, parallel to the road. It's all about safety issues that are directed from the CCC and the police department. So this is going to be one-way traffic uh, for vehicles on the yeah. property? Yes. It's going to go in on the right and around the building and out on the left. And exit on the left, right. That way, that way there's no uh, backup. It's, and it's going to, every day there will be somebody there directing traffic. There's going to be security every single day and going directing traffic every single day to make sure there's nothing that gets all stacked up or anybody that stays on the property longer than they should. Everybody's supposed to be in and out within 10 minutes. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, so then I suppose uh, my comment would be just, just observationally for consideration is it looks like you've got some lawn in the front and maybe you could build, move the whole thing a little bit closer. And Oh, that's the setback. Is that the setback line? That you're, yeah. Okay, that's, that's the setback line. line. Right. So, okay. you curious about the future garage that's noted there. I'm kind of wondering the purpose of it and if that couldn't be for some reason co uh, located elsewhere and bring that retaining wall further in. That garage is going to be for future, um, future business. It's not a uh, personal use. It's going to be for future business. We're not utilizing it now. We're, we're stacking it on now because financially it's better to put it on now than to do it later because of the way the building is built. Um, every time you try to dip into it, it's going to cost more later than it would now. Are there any other questions on this for the board? No. Yes, I'm Jeremy Flansburg, 73 Davis Street. I have a lot of questions. It's still, it's still just the board. Excuse me? I was still just addressing the board. Okay, sir. So again, if there's nothing else from the board, yes, I will open the public hearing. Jeremy, please go ahead. Yes, Jeremy Flansburg, 73 Monroe Street. Yep. Well, 73 Davis Street, excuse me, right across the street. I don't know how, I don't know how much land he owns but according to this, uh, the notice I was sent, he's constructing a 30 by 112 retail establishment. And I know even on a probably a one acre piece of property, he can't get a, uh, uh, a footprint of that size, a septic system, and a well on the same piece of property. And the other thing is when this did go in front of the planning board, I know this is not your issue, there was a lot of concern about the water runoff and um, uh, permeable versus per versus not permeable. And I believe at the time, Louie agreed that if it was an office building, he was going to put in a dirt, the parking lot 
it wasn't going to be paved. So if he wants to pave it, that's obviously changing everything. And I'd like to find out a little bit more information on how this is going to affect the pond that's directly behind this. Because uh, uh, currently, it's like the town pull-off for the local pee stop. Everybody just stops down there and just, and I live right next to it. I see it every day. And I'd like to know how, it, are they going to go, is it going to be permeable or impermeable on their um, um, uh, park lot? Because the park lot was supposed to be non-paved based on an approval of the site review when it was going to be an office building. Can somebody answer those questions for me, please? So I will have, I, I will have Karen answer some questions for you, but I know we're all looking at the plan that shows the 30 by 100 foot building and the parking lot on the same lot. Yes, this is, this is a completely new plan. I understand the original provision may have had different issues for stormwater management and certainly with a paved parking lot that that's that's absolutely something that we're going to look at uh we do have a marked intermittent stream behind there and um they do have a stormwater management plan karen can you can you speak to this gentleman's questions a uh, moment well his first question was how big the lot was it's a ninety thousand eight hundred and eighty five foot square foot lot and back in 2009, an order of conditions was issued on this on a smaller building, I mean, a larger building than what is uh, proposed now. Um, I am not sure if it was to be paved, but it looks like it must have been because I have a septic system going on the um, pro previously proposed building. And I believe drainage system also that was, was proposed um, on the previously proposed uh, approved plan. Um, his other questions, uh, I, I know that, you know, it's a stopping place or a turnaround for people right at the moment. I think when the building goes in, it will not be that at all. Uh, I think, you know, it'll be, there'll be cameras, surveillance cameras out there. Um, police will be going by it as a retail establishment. So I think that that is an issue of his concern, and I think that'll be taken care of with the new building that's proposed. May I interject here again, please? Um, sorry, Teresa. Yes, may I may I say have a few things to say? To yeah, sure. Okay, first off, when this was approved, that was for a forty thousand square foot building. We are now three thousand square feet, immensely smaller. That's number one. Number two is he made comment that the lot was about one acre. It's two acres of land. It's uh, 50 spaces of parking. And as far as how people are using that property now, because there's nothing there, you're absolutely right. That was brought up in the outreach meeting. But once this building is up and running and we have lighting in the parking lot 24 seven, security 24 seven up to the second, people are gonna know this isn't a place to stop anymore. Because if they do stop, they're going to be on camera 24-7 if the police are not there. So that's going to alleviate that whole mess and everybody's going to come over there, as you said, as a peace stop. Very bad. It's not going to be that anymore. It's going to be a reputable place. Okay. Steve, you, you, you're missing the whole point. That's what I don't want. I don't want lights on in my backyard 24-7. That's what I'm... You put them up on telephone poles and put them towards your building. Don't put them on your building and put them towards me. I don't Jeremy, want the lights sorry, on me. I'm sorry. The topic of the lighting is outside the the is outside the scope of this. Yeah, I get it. But 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 this lady is going on saying it's going to be secure and all this other crap. I, yeah. I that's not my concern. All right, all right. Right now we're talking about conservation. There yeah. was a big issue regarding the permeability of the of the parking lot. And everybody agreed that it was not going to be paved. Now it's going to be paved. What are the ramifications and how is this going to affect catch basins? And how is it going to affect the 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 pond 
which is a direct that that's a cold water fishery and nobody seems to want to care about it it's what they're doing up on the top of the hill remember this is going to affect my well too my well is going to be affected by this and i want to make sure that the the native brook trout in that stream are protected and my daughter and me and my wife have good clean water Absolutely, um, I understand, and, and and I'm definitely sympathetic to cold water fisheries, and I understand that. Um, so that's why, whenever there are plans like this, we're very aware of stormwater management, where the water is going to go, how it's going to be managed. Um, I don't know if the non-permeable surface for this plan is larger or smaller than the last plan. Honestly, I'm not familiar with the previous plan for this project. Um, but absolutely, that's why we engineer the stormwater management based on the plan that we're looking at. You know, understood. Well, obviously, there's going to be a lot more, a lot more uh, 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 vehicle uh, using on this. There's going to be a lot more vehicle using. And the other right. thing is, uh, is Tracy Shockey voting on this tonight? No, she's recused herself. I didn't see her rescind her rescind anything. She has already recused herself from this portion of the meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so yes, we'll absolutely address any stormwater management issues. The number of vehicles doesn't impact the amount of non-permeable surfaces, but definitely all the engineering is done by the amount of non, based on the amount of non-permeable surfaces on the soil. Right. Understood the sensitivity to the cold water fisheries in this region. Um, are there any Where's other- Where's it going? Where is, all right, if you get test basins, where is this water going? It's going into that pond. Now, no. how do we... Which, which pond are you referring then? to? Can you clarify which pond you're referring to? The pond between Maycomb's Pond. It's always been Maycomb's Pond. It's the pond that's, um, I would say it'd be to the west of of davis street okay no not west it would be to the um what's what it'd be south south of davis because davis runs east to west it, it's it, it's may come as pond steve can you can you speak to the the locus of this project in the pond in reference yes it's 97 Monroe, I mean, Davis, where I live, right across the street from, there's a pond there. Yeah. Are you? Yeah, hang on, let me. Let me see Thank you. We're, we're going to pull it up. Can you see this? There's the pond abutting the backside of this piece of property. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a video delay, but we're we're watching you pull it up. It's the pond that the stream runs into. Sorry, Rich. This I used to go ice skate here when I was a kid. Or right, this is a public hearing. We'll finish, Jeremy, and then Rich, I'd be happy to hear you. Can you see the highlighted area? Yeah. Yes. Thank this you. Is so this is okay. The... All right. All right then, um, Karen. Can you speak to the stormwater management? Um, the stormwater management is proposed underneath the paved uh, parking area. It okay. is to be infiltrated through the, the uh, ground underneath the parking area. All catch basins and drain manholes are to go into that leaching area. Okay. And that's going to be reviewed by the, uh, the planning board? Yeah. Review and then, then we'll be able to bring that on in back call that into the conservation commission once that's re, uh, complete so does this the stormwater planning does that also account for oil gas vehicle pollution that's going to get washed off the hard surface parking lot <clears throat> it, yes and there's an infiltration system in one of the drain manholes for that Thank you, Karen. Jeremy, does that answer all your questions for the time being? Is there going to be a pond? 
Is there going to be a pawn? No. There is no detention pawn proposed. All drainage is to be subsurface. And there is going to be a, a grease and, and um, sand track. And water filter, yes. Interceptor. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Um, appreciate it. So um, did I have any other comments or questions from the public and the public hearing? Yes, I've got a question. It's Rich Fenicasa from uh, 9496 Monroe Street, um, uh, directly across Monroe. The stream mm -hmm. there, my first question is, uh, what determines that as an intermittent stream? That is determined by the Wetlands Protection Act, the regulations from the DEP streams are determined by the USGS map. But it, it, being intermittent, are you saying that that stream dries up? It's not a full-time stream? It's, well, there's, there's, two, there's two sections. Of the, um, it's what, what, when it comes to the Wetlands Protection Act and in the, with the DEP, riverfront uh, perennial streams and intermittent streams, what classifies them is the USGS map. So you take a look at the USGS map and if it's a dark blue line, it's, it's a perennial stream, which has riverfront area. And if it's a light blue line, it's intermittent and that's how they classify it. Um, it may not dry up certain periods of time, but that's the classification that the, the state has given it. And then to overturn that, you would have to update the DEP regulations on, or the mapping of the USGS map. Now there is a provision from turning, um, perennial streams into intermittent streams because they tend to, if a perennial stream that's classified as riverfront dries up more, I believe it's five consecutive days in a non-drought period, you can document that by a credible source, submit that to the commission and get that stream changed. Um, I don't believe it goes the other way, classifying an intermittent to perennial. I might be wrong on that. Um, I can check on that, but to answer your question, it's it's based on the USGS map, the green maps that you see. And maybe if I, I might be able to call one up here on my screen, if my screen is still active. Steve, I might be able to help you out a little here on this one. So this um, is a, it all so comes it, down if, if, if a he, stream is is. Hang on a second, is, is Jeremy. Main. Hang on, Jeremy. Yeah, so yeah. Can, can everybody see the map? Yes. So yes. You, so you, I have two streams on this map. I have one that's coming out of uh, Wellman Brook here. You see this one to the left, and how it's a dark blue line. Yep. So this is this this screen represents one of those old you know navigation maps, the, U, the USGS maps that you fold up. I, and it's all green. So if you look at that on, on a USGS map, one of those green maps, this will come in as solid blue, dark blue. That means it's perennial, it means it's got riverfront area. It does not dry up. This dash line on the map represents another stream, but it's classified as intermittent because it's dashed on the USGS map. Now this doesn't, I'd have to look at the paper copy, but doesn't even show that there's a stream that comes out of the uh, north of the uh, pond. Obviously there is because, you know, it took a video of it and it comes out of the wetlands along here. But to answer the gentleman's question, that's what designates the stream as being um, perennial or intermittent. Okay, um, my, my concern about this is, um, uh, I went to the meeting originally when they talked about this and, um, you know, at the time nobody was calling it an intermittent stream. Now I've been on this property for 25 years and that pipe, that stream comes off of my property. And in 25 years, even during the drought that has never dried up. And I understand Jeremy's concern because there are fingling trout that actually swim up that stream. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I know it's there. Now, one of the issues I had in 2009 was um, this stream getting filled in. And GBI's representative at the time said, oh no, you can't fill in a stream, it's illegal. Unfortunately, the town has been doing it. The town has been pushing dirt into that pipe on Monroe Street, and it's been significantly increasing the water level on my property. 
Uh, my neighbors are on here tonight because they're concerned too, because I'm literally going to be have waterfront property the way the town is doing. It. If anybody looks at that pipe, you're going to see that it's more, more than half full of dirt. And you can see the plow marks on the street. And on top of that, all the debris and trash that runs down the street, you know, from all the slobs that throw stuff out, all the litter and bear cans and everything else is getting dumped directly into that pipe, which is washing into that pond, which is basically polluting the pond. Now, conservation, you, you know, you should know as conservation that you can't fill in a stream and you're filling in at the pipe and you're flooding my property and my neighbor's property is directly bordering that property. So that is considered wetlands. So I, you know, I, I, I want to, I want that addressed more than anything. I mean, that's, you yeah, know, so that's the biggest thing with the stream. If you want to, if you want to send us an email on that, that, and I would recommend going to the planning board where you, you have the town engineer and the planning board, and you have some highway people on there that if the, if the town is doing that, it'd be I'd, I'd, interesting to make sure that they have, they have the knowledge that that's going on. Um, the pipe that's on that, you know, that's the pipe that's going on the Monroe street. Um, Richard, uh, you I'm sorry. Contact information. What's that? I'm, I'm sorry. No, I was just making sure, Rich, that you have Steve's contact information. Uh, yeah. I don't. I, I actually don't do a whole lot of stuff online, so this um, this whole quarantine thing is a little tough. Um, yeah. I do have video, um, you know, proving what I'm saying, and my neighbors have seen it. But and anybody that goes over in that pipe can see it. Um, you know, one of the, one of the problems is is um, you, you know with them plugging it up, that could possibly cause that stream to dry up, Who's even they? though it never has. Who's they? I'm sorry. Who's they? Who's who's they? When you say they, plugging it up. The well, the town. I'm saying the town pushing yeah. stuff in. Yeah, into I would it. definitely contact. Okay. The, I would t contact the town engineer in the highway, um, if, if especially if that's on town property if it's part of Monroe Street to take a look at it for me. Right, because I really, I want to reel this back into the project that we're talking about at hand. I want to, you know, keep the focus of this meeting to the project we're discussing. But Rich, absolutely, the proper process when you see issues like that is to contact Steve and let us know. Um, again, I want to keep moving on this topic, but, you know, you, when you have concerns, you, you know, you can contact the town. Uh, yeah, actually, I just, I actually, years ago, they did it. I asked them to stop and they did. I just recently noticed my water level getting higher and higher. And I think, okay. um, you know, the, the pollution going into the pond is, you know, that, I mean, that's a big, that's a big thing to address too. So I, I can understand Jeremy's thing, but he is right. There are fingling trout in that pond. And, you know, my concern also is polluting that pond too. So I would, you know, I, I would definitely want to, um, you know, keep that issue addressed too so okay no, i understand did you have any other other questions regarding the project uh, um no uh could you tell me who i'm supposed to contact um, exactly who i contact to get this address well to get that address the pipe i would contact uh, the town engineer bill cundiff or bill john Cundiff's. yeah or john ferno of the highway department okay Okay, that uh, that answers my questions. Okay, great. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks, Rich. All right, is there um, anyone else from the public hearing that wants to that has a question or a concern? Yeah, I know. There's one last thing. Um, <laughs> this town's invested over fifty million dollars in in their schools, and all of our kids. Well, I shouldn't say all that kids go to school. Um, I don't know what the address to the school is, but um, I definitely, I definitely see them every day in the the fall, and they run the track team runs right up, right by this new pot shop. Yeah, and they take a they bang a left down my dirt road, and. Uh, I love watching it. I wa I love watching the kids just enjoy running, and and now you're gonna have all these people buying pot, and and I just don't think that this is a, a good thing for our community. 
It's just not a good location. That's all I got to say about that. Okay. And that's and that's what I what I want to say. That's thank you, sir. That's all I got to say. They can run right other, by and buy so pot. We have, Sorry, we have outside June, the scope of the of the meeting. We have Steve. June, June first at nine thirty. I mean eight thirty. Which is that? We have June June first at eight thirty opened up. What? For, that sounds good. For continuation. I still have to close the public hearing. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. All right, can I have a motion? If there's nothing further, can I have a motion to close the public hearing? Well, we want to continue it, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we want to continue it. Continue it. Right, sorry. Yes, that. Art, please. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to make a motion that we continue the public hearing for 93 Davis Street to June 1st at 8 30. Thank you. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's everyone except for Marks who's out today. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you Thank both. You. Thank you, Katie. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Certainly. Okay. So we're looking at the next thing on our agenda is the 8 p.m. Walham Lake Road. Yes. Do we want to let Tracy come back? Tracy, you back? Hi, everybody. Hi. Hey, Robert, turn that down. Okay. So next uh, is, oh, I have to recuse myself also. For Walham Lake Solar, okay. Yeah, so go for All it. right, sorry, I, I, I welcome you back too early. What? <laughs> do you need me anymore? We do. do. You do? Oh, okay, all right. Do, so yeah. Just call my name when you're okay. ready. All right, 8 p.m. public hearing continued for Wallam Lake Road, ASD Wallam, Massachusetts Solar for the shade tree cutting. Oh, I'm recusing myself for the record, too. Thank you, Tracy. So is the applicant here? Yes. Oh, excellent. Uh, Maria Furstenberg with TRC is here, and I believe that uh, Evan Turner is also on the line. Uh, from Aries Solar Design. Good evening. I apologize. So this is a continuation. I don't have a public notice and I don't have green cards. No, just a continuation. Okay. Wonderful. Oh, I remember this. We talked about the, the extent of the shade tree cutting for the edge of this project. Excellent. So we're just pulling that up. And yes, Steve, I can see, I can see a map with trees in various colors. Right. So, uh, All right, yes, Maria. All right, so at the last meeting, um, I think one of the biggest questions we walked away with was, you know, how many trees are we cutting down in each of the zones? Um, just for some background, because it's been a little while since we talked about this. Um, the solar facility itself is completely outside of the buffer zone. Um, and we have come back because this particular portion of the site, if we clear some trees and selectively cut others, it it really um, enhances the efficiency of the panels, which is why we're making the request. So since the last meeting, we did a survey based on what we were hoping to cut in each area. So for a, a short review, we had split the buffer zone into basically four 25 foot zones. Um, the, the 25 feet closest to the wetland, we proposed absolutely no work in. The next 25 feet, so 25 to 50 feet from the wetland, we had proposed cutting trees that were 50 feet tall or taller. Um, our survey showed that we had 195 trees that met that criteria in this zone. Um, then we have a zone that is 50 to 75 feet away from the wetland. 
and we had proposed cutting trees that were taller than 25 feet. We have 307 trees that meet that criteria. And then we have the outermost 25 feet from the wetlands. Um, and we had that area marked as, as generally clearing. Um, and we have 476 trees in that zone. So the way that this is shown is that the, basically each zone has a different color tree in it to kind of help differentiate where everything is growing and to give you an idea of how dense the trees are in some places. The other thing that we had discussed at the last meeting was having the commissioners kind of do some self-guided tours. So I was wondering if, if anyone had actually had the opportunity to do that. No. 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 So thank you. I really appreciate the, the diagram showing all the trees and the colors. It certainly helps. Can you give us those numbers again on how many trees? I can, but I also, so we're looking kind of at the bottom of the plan here. The numbers that I gave you for each zone are actually in a table in the kind of upper right. Yep. Ah, okay. Right there. So they're, they're actually on the sheet too. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Nice job. I mean, I did take a video a month or so ago. I don't know if people had a chance to see it. It's a little sketchy. The camera is acting up a little bit, but it kind of gave you just a sense of the type of trees. I don't know if it was helpful or not. Yeah. So there was one comment. So DEP actually, you know, the original project was, as Maria was saying, was outside the jurisdiction of the Con Conservation Commission where all the solar panels are going, um, everything in the hatched area. And so stormwater was, was approved by a planning board and site plan review. And so the areas where it's all colored is inside the jurisdiction. And so you, you submitted some, uh, you know, to, to us and a DEP gets a comment and DEP had a comment regarding the stormwater, Maria. Yes. Um, do you happen to have the the plan that we gave you and DEP that shows where the detention basin is, just so that we can all see where we're talking about? Uh, let me take a look. I, I think it's in in the west side of the site, but I just think it would be helpful if everyone could see it while we talk about it. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. Can people see the? Is this coming up yeah. on the? Right here? Yes. Okay, great. So DEP's comment was um, basically to confirm that the retention basins are not going to be lower than the typical water table, um, because if, if they intersect the water table, then they won't be as efficient. Um, so my understanding is that these detention basins were at least partially at the request of the planning board. Um, and I don't have all of the information on that with me. I do know that they were engineered. Um, that area that they're in is mapped as Woodbridge, Fine, Sandy, Loam. All of the data that we have is consistent with that. And the soil profile for that has groundwater typically um, between 19 and 27 inches. So it is a shallow area, but typically your stormwater detention basins are not more than a couple feet deep. So it's very close, but it really shouldn't be intersecting the stormwater table or the, the groundwater table, sorry. Are you still in front of the planning board? Uh, I'm going to turn that over to Evan, because I think you, Evan, you know more about what's going on with yes. the planning board than I do. Uh, good evening, everyone. We are 
applying back to the uh, planning board, not for any uh, amendment of the site plan review permit at this present time, we are going back in front of them to consolidate the parcels back into a single parcel, reversing the subdivision and removing the covenant, the subdivision for the central road that was planned, but never built. Right. We're also going to talk uh, decommissioning bonds, some other permit related uh, items before we get into construction. Uh, but no, there is no other, I guess, amendment to the permit. Uh, I think you, you might be referring to. Yeah, since, since you know these are official comments from the, the DEP, do you think and planning board it really uh, entails your stormwater management that was approved really on a site plan review? Any way to get uh, bring this up in front of them and, and just get some type of something for the file to say that it's you know the, there's no other absolutely. Change uh, we can the DEP just, you know, the, comments. You know, adding the what your proposed your proposed uh, project with the conservation commission is is not going to add or it, it suffices what they were approving yes sir so i will confirm with the planning board or open up another public hearing as required these changes are i guess de minimis and not a major change to the permit and i don't require any other i guess review or change to the layout of the site or the engineering involved i'm so i trust bill uh kind of will take a look at the proposed area that we're uh, going to clear or selectively cut and uh, make sure it doesn't invalidate any of the previous work we've done and he, that he's reviewed. Great. Perfect. Did we have any other comments from the board looking at this new plan or this, this update to this, to the plan showing the trees? Um, I think later on tonight, we're going to be talking about a possible site walk on Davis Street. Maybe we want to do uh, a walk over here at the same date as well. True. Sorry, Steve, what? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. If you guys want to schedule a site walk. Yeah, I would actually, I mean, since we're talking, we're talking a lot of trees here, so. Yeah, absolutely. It, it um, is. Um, just just for some scale, because this is a really big site, these trees, there are a lot of them, but they're also over three acres. Um, each zone is approximately an acre in size. So it, it's still a lot of trees, but I just wanted to kind of put that into some perspective here. No, I, I, under, I totally appreciate the, the <laughs> understanding of scale. As you know, we look at a lot of plans that are at a much smaller scale than this, so. Yeah. <laughs> So no, that is, that is important to appreciate. Thank you. I just get a better um, a better view of my mind if I can walk the property. So yeah, I know. I wish we had taken the opportunity to walk it sooner. Yeah, it just when we did the last on my, yeah. wasn't on my to do list for the last time. A little bit more vegetation now, but um, there's still a path. So we, you know, this Saturday is open. Yes, it is. If you guys, I don't know if anyone's schedules like. Yeah, that could work for me. Um, I just like to make sure that we're well after nine o'clock or after 10 o'clock. I work out at nine. Okay. Uh, I will be unable to make that visit and I would generally prefer to be uh, at a site walk on the property. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I can make it if, if you want, Evan. Okay. Uh, would our next meeting if be? If you prefer not, then that's okay. I just wanted well, to. There's, there's, the, there. there's the 16th or there's the 23rd. Was well, that no the twenty third? That's uh, Memorial Day weekend. We're not doing that. Sorry, I'll scratch that. <laughs> but I have so many other plans that day. <laughs> um, to get it in before the next meeting, it probably has to be the sixteenth. Yeah, sixteenth. No, and I prefer we do it while it's fresher in our minds too. Yeah. Uh, All right. We'll make that at at 11. eleven, I will. I would like eleven. from. We talking eleven o'clock on the sixteenth. Yeah. Yeah. What is the? You know, I can see that there's a cart path that comes through here. There's an opening on the street. Is there an address for that opening? Um, there is not. It is between, okay. I believe, seventy-five and eighty-three. 
but if you're, you're going by, you will very clearly see the uh, mushy driveway on the right as you go towards Rhode Island. Uh, yep. There are no or anywhere to really park, so expect to park along the street. Okay, thank you. Well, we could meet someplace and do the wagon train type thing. <laughs> Social distancing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Are there any other comments on this plan? Um, Steve, were, were you mostly concerned about the stormwater comment or was there anything else that you wanted to discuss from DEP while we're all here? Was there something else they had commented on? Um, well, they kind of, the way that they wrote it, it's all like sort of one big stream of consciousness. <laughs> um, the, the main thing was the stormwater. They said, you know, confirm that we're creating meadow. Um, we, we are creating meadow within the solar field area. Um, the, the plans that were approved are that we're, we're using pollinator friendly plants, et cetera. And it, it had some additional comments related to that, like, you know, that we shouldn't use herbicides, which I, I think were already part of the conditions that we had from the planning board. Right. So I, I got the comments up now. I don't know if people can see them. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was the major one. I mean, yeah, I've, I'm assuming the, the other ones would be general condition ones anyways. Okay. I just wanted to, to double check and make sure. Yeah, like with the other project we had, um, is there any uh, bordering or peripheral fencing on this? Uh, there, there's a perimeter fence around the whole facility. But is the that fencing will not include the cleared or selective cutting area that will be that, outside. That's what I'm getting at. Does the, it, how, what kind of fencing is it? Chain link uh, with a gap at the bottom. Is there a gap for uh, wildlife habitat movement? Yes. Yes, sir. Right. Is it greater than eight inches? I believe it was called six uh, in the planning board. Uh, the permit, but I mean, it varies consistently at the bottom. It doesn't track the ground perfectly by any means. Okay. I mean, that helps. Uh, the general recommendation from the Blackstone Valley Watershed Association is eight to 10. Okay. Good to know. I will use that going forward. Thanks. All right. Any other questions from the comments from the board? Nope. I don't know. I, nope. We're not, we don't still have a public hearing open, do we? Yeah. yeah. We're gonna oh, it's still a public hearing. Yeah, we're going to continue it until June 1st at uh, 845. Okay, but are there any other comments for the public before we continue it? All right, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, would you like to? Sure. Um, I'll make a motion that we continue the public hearing for this Wallam Lake Road project June 1st at 8.45 p.m. Second. Excellent, all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you. Thank you. Yep, certainly. Thank See you. you. Saturday. Yes, Good. absolutely, looking forward to it. All right, so the next item we had on the agenda was 815 public hearing amended NIOI DP 143, TAC 973 for 49 Woodland Road, Deer Crossing Development. Do we want Tracy to come back? Yeah. Sure. I'm back. Damn, a storm. Uh, for the record. Okay. Why do you have a blanket? No. Why do you have a blanket? Why? Quiet. Why? Okay. I Let me just grab. Here, you have it. Here, you have it. 
Here you have it. Sorry about that. All right. Town of Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing for 49 Woodland Road on May 11th, 2020 at 8.15 p.m. in the Municipal Center, 29 Depot Street, for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw, the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40. The proposed work location will be done on Lot 57B and involves amending the sequence of work and making modifications to the limit of work, house, garage, well, and driveway locations. Uh, this is a remote meeting. And the directions to participate are on the website. Okay. Steve, do you wanna open things up? Uh, sure. So we did the, uh, let me see if I can bring it up under my screen. Hang on one second. Do you wanna see everybody? Do you wanna see everybody? Why? Uh, everybody remember we did a site walk uh, last Saturday yes on this property they wanted they had the crossing uh, there was a little tiny stream that was crossing through it they kind of cleared up to the crossing and they want to amend this plan where there's two two existing houses after you cross it one to the left one to the right they want to remove those houses and find a lot into one and put one house where it is in, on the red. So I think Dave Mockerdon is here. Um, Dave, you yep. got any updates or comments you want to give on the project? Um, no, uh, we're basically calling this lot 57. Uh, you're absolutely right. Um, uh, the limit of work previously was in the green tint and now the limit of work will be in the purple. Um, the, uh, based on the site walk, we heard a comment about uh, maybe making a uniform uh, driveway width from start to finish. Right. Uh, the right. original, um, we originally had a shared driveway that came from Woodland Road in about 225 feet. And now, and then it used to branch off to 58 to the left and then 57 to the right. So now we're just creating the one lot, which like I said, called 57. So we've changed the driveway width from 18 at the beginning to 12 up by the house to a uniform 10, uh, 10 foot wide from Woodland Road all the way up to the house. Uh, mm -hmm. So we've further reduced the amount of impervious area. Uh, the, only, the only glitch that we've had today uh, is that that red house, uh, the, the garage and the barn is okay. Um, the buyer uh, is supposed to have committed uh, to a, an actual building size prior to uh, this meeting, at least a couple of weeks ago. We've yet to get a confirmation from him on the exact size of that house. Uh, we think we're okay, uh, but we would want to make sure that uh, his plan, the one that we're going to build, is in fact the one that we show in the drawing. So we're, we tried to reach him today. Uh, Jack did. Jack's here as well, Jack Nealon. Um, and we tried to reach him again today. And uh, so we're, uh, we'd like to talk about this project, but uh, we, we certainly can't close it until we have confirmation from him that that red box uh, is not gonna get any bigger uh, than what's shown. Um, right now, uh, we heard, um, we were here on the 27th of April. Um, Katie Grace had uh, mentioned something about possibly moving the uh, dwelling a little bit further out of the buffer zone. Uh, we in fact did that. The red house that you see there was the exact same one that's on the plan. Uh, we moved it with the same alignment back further to the rear lot line by five feet, which because of the angle of the skew made us uh, four feet further away from the wetland. Um, so we did, we did listen to the board. We did make a small adjustment. Um, the garage as well uh, got moved away. Uh, slightly, um, all for the better. Um, so everything else remains the same. The culvert stays the same. The replication area stays the same. Um, we're now sort of considering that we are considering this as one buildable lot. Um, the house is sitting, uh, if you will, on the original lot line. We are going to combine the lots uh, into one lot. Um, and uh, we, we were sort of anxious to get up on top. Um, I'm anxious to hear what the board thought uh, from their little site visit on Saturday 
about the possibility of putting in the uh, temporary pipes to allow us to cut the remainder of the property um, and get up top and put a well in so that we can get going on our foundation. Uh, but the only glitch that we have tonight, like I said, is that we wanted confirmation from buyer prior to tonight and we haven't got that yet. <clears throat> we didn't see much of a stream. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It kind of comes out of the hill, goes for a short 60 feet maybe, and then goes right back into the ground. It dissipates very quickly. Yep. Oh. No, I appreciate the changes you put in here. Excuse me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the driveway makes a lot of sense to me. So, Dave, you're going to want to continue the meeting. Well, we we'll, you know, uh, we're we're wondering if the with the previous plan uh, back from last year, uh, because of the two lots, we had uh, created a construction sequence. Right. And now yeah. we're wondering if we're we're, we're going to be tackling Jack's going to be tackling many tasks at the same time. So we're wondering if we need the sequence. Uh, once the board gives their permission to cross the wetland right. with the temporary pipes, because we're, we're we're anxious, Jack's anxious to put the put the erosion control in from start to finish. Right, remainder of the trees. Okay, so you're talk. you're asking you're asking under, under the old order and even amended to to go ahead and start working in that area, and then come back you know at the next meeting, and just to finalize where the house is gonna be located, make sure the owner doesn't change it by a couple of feet here and there. Right. 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 The issue will be working on two simultaneous um, orders, right? So we've got the old order that you're looking to put the, do the work within the, the jurisdiction and now you're looking to amend it. So there's like, where's the line? So, we we had we had three orders for this property, right. one each lot plus the shared driveway. Uh, even though it's one lot, we were gonna we were gonna leave the share the the front part as the shared driveway number, and then the back lot we were gonna amend fifty seven and call that fifty seven, and then remove uh, ask for a uh, certificate of compliance on fifty eight the one to the left. So that, that would allow us to work on the driveway, continue to work on the driveway. With the order in place, mm -hmm. 57, um, uh, the amendment. Okay. Um, have you been out there lately? Because when we were out there, um, it kind of dissipates towards the end, but um, it was still kind of flowing a little bit. Were you out there lately? Um, no, you were there uh, the last. I haven't okay. been there since you were there. No. Okay. Um, board, your opinion on this? So for temporary piping, temporary yeah, piping. I, I didn't have any issue with the temporary pipes. Is there still? So there was some discussion about waiting until it was totally dry. Um, there was other discussion thinking that it was never going to be totally dry. Um, well, I, I think he's going to wait till it's totally dry to put the permanent crossing in. Okay. Correct. He wants to get in there to you know, declare it and hay bale it and just to do some prep work. And that prep work would fall under the old the old orders. Order. Obviously he's not going to clear the driveway to the left, right, Dave? You're just going to do what you can. It would be the less less work than what was proposed under the ballot orders to the right. state. Right. And then he'll be back in a month if the guy finalizes the red line, um, I think he just, he, I think they're being cautious because if we if we approve it tonight and then he comes back and wants to change it a little bit, he's gonna have to reopen the, the amendment process. Correct. Right. So okay. just going through the correct protocol. So will he get a certificate for that temporary work that wasn't completed and then the new one will be picking up from there? Yeah, so we, we, would, uh, we would create the letter for the next meeting to uh, abolish that other DEP number for 58 mm -hmm. and uh, have confirmation by that next hearing for the, the size of the red house and then um, 
in the meantime, I'm going to um, continue work um, and get up top. Okay. Just, or just, what are, are your thoughts on uh, the temporary, the, the new proposed construction sequence? So Art, you've already voiced your opinion. I no, think. I'm okay with it. Um, Katie Grace? I have mixed feelings about it. I don't love it, but I mean, after going to the site and looking at the crossing, I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to hurt anything to do the culverts. It's going to keep the water moving. I don't think we have any species trying to get in and out of that wetlands, you know, this time of year, especially if it, what it, we looked at it and we looked at it and that kind of the wet area ends like yeah. what, 25, 50 feet further. Yeah. So I think we'll be okay. Okay. Uh, Mike. Okay. Okay, Paul. I will defer to the folks who've seen the site since I wasn't okay. able to be there. So. Thank you. Um, Eric, any questions on this? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, so board, did you have a chance to take a look at the construction sequence that was on the Google Drive? I didn't. <clears throat> No, I did not. You want to just tell us the, the two, um, the sequence was just um, switched around, correct? Um, on 10. Oh, I remember this one. Yeah, we did look at this. Yeah. Yeah, we had, we had uh, put it on the new plan. Uh, do you have the new plan, Steve? I do. We also have it as a document. Okay. Yep. I don't know which plan it was. It's on uh, sheet one of two. Yeah, so number four sheet, two, yep. all two 12 inch ADS pipes with riprap aprons as temporary crossing. There it is right there. Yep. yep. This is a new plan. He submitted this today. Yep. Um, it's a narrow driveway. And then here's the, it's the sequence right here and to the right. The other thing you'll be transporting in some material for that replication area, right? Yes. You're not getting really much from the actual location of the crossing. Yeah, uh, I had created some protocols as well for it's replication. To me. Yeah. Yeah. So board that you understand that that it's not it's not sufficient the material coming out of here to even use for the replication area. So, uh, Steve, you want to have a motion to accept the new construction sequence to allow for the temporary crossing to be placed? Yes. Okay. Anybody want to make a motion to that effect? Yeah. Um, I move that we amend the construction sequence written so to change and allow the temporary uh, pipe crossing to be put in place. Okay, motions are made. Second. Second by Art. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Everyone unanimous except for Mark Mungum. Thank yep. you. Okay, so um, let me see if anyone in the audience has any questions. Now would be a good time. Let me know. Steve, do you see anybody? No. I see 14 people, right? Well, I think um, Byron is an engineer. Okay. All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion to continue this hearing. So I'm going to, I'd like to sneak this in. It's just hopefully this is taking less than five minutes. Okay. So seven, yep. seven, ten. Okay. And yeah, uh, June. Uh, yeah. What's the, what's, the right, date, yeah. what's the date? I'm sorry. June 1st. June 1st. Okay. I'll make a motion to continue this to June 1st at 7, 10 p.m. Okay. Second. Okay, that is for uh, 4953 Woodland Road amended NOI. Uh, motion to make seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mark. I mean, see you, Dave. See you, Jack. Thank you. Okay. And the last, whoops, what did I press? 
The last item on our agenda, 8.30 p.m. Notice of intent public hearing continued 116 Orange Street. They asked for a continuance. Okay. Um, June 15th at 7 p.m. June 15th, 7 p.m. Uh, anybody in the audience for this hearing? Negative, okay. I'll entertain a motion to continue. So moved. Continue to uh, so the public hearing June. for 116 Orange Street to June 15th at 7 p.m. Okay, motion and made. Second. Second by Mike Greco. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item is Bonnie Johnson, 42 Huff Road, revised plan. Okay. Hello. It was too good to be true the last time. You didn't like that plan, I guess. <laughs> well, it all, it, it, um, what ended up happening is as we put the well in and we went to hook up the water, where we were digging it was too wet. So we went to one of your, one of the suggestions at a prior board meeting, which was to the side on the driveway or near the driveway. And so we put the dry well there. It was dry. We dug it up. We had to put it somewhere. So we put it there. I did notify Steve. He was like, I can't do anything until the board, but we were in the middle of a project and had to do something with the, um, we had to do something with the water. So, um, so where do you have the revised plan submitted? Is yes, it, is my, it, are my Steve pictures on this? Are my pictures on the screen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let me just run through them a little bit. But this is where it was going to go. Yes. Yep. That's it. It's taking driveway runoff also. Pardon? I don't think so. Oh, what was that little vent? That was the, the clean out. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought it was like a catch basin like thing at the top. Yeah, I did no. too. No, and okay. um, no, we never park up that far. That's never been part of a driveway up there. Okay. It was improperly sited on, on one of our um, as built. We've always parked before. Okay. And you can see where the the sidewalk is that you walk up. You know, it's it's in this area here. Okay, for the record, did you submit a plan to Steve? Yes. Okay. Um, did you give me an updated one? You, you sent me this. I sent it to you today. Oh. <laughs> well. Is this it? Not that I can see. It's probably coming. Oh, sure. so we've already voted on this, so it. we're just simply looking to get that circulated to sign that. How's that? There it is. There you go. <laughs> I'm getting better. <laughs> Good job. Um, so I put a sticky over where the new is. Okay. Um, do you have dimensions like ties from the corners or the length out? It's about eight feet, I believe. Steve, does that sound right? I didn't remeasure. I guess as good as mine. Yeah, I think it's Just for the records for him. Um, when he looks back in his files, I'd prefer if we actually had a tie, you know, or some sort of measurements instead of just a line with a dot. Okay, so so that's what we gave last time. So I I wasn't real worried about that, or I would have gone out there today. Okay. Um, I would say, I mean, to me, I can go out and remeasure it tomorrow and send in the exact measurements for you for your record if that works. 
Okay. Yeah, so we've already voted on this. Yep. So uh, board, it was unacceptable with the water where they had proposed previously, so they've just adjusted. But it is installed. The pipes aren't flowing on anybody else's property. So anybody have any questions or comments, concerns on this? No. No. Nope. So let's circulate the certificate, Steve. Okay. We can get that signed. Sure. Um, put Mark last this time. <laughs> we'll try to get it signed and um, just let Steve know a couple of dimensions on that. I will do that tomorrow. Okay. I'll send them via an email. Okay. okay. Or nothing else on this one, right? No. no. Right. Okay. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Steve, set site walk for complaint 3032 Davis Street. Yeah. So we had a, there was a, a complaint that went to the Board of Health um, a few months ago before COVID 19 struck. Uh, struck. And uh, they, the, the owner uh, was requesting a coming from the board to discuss the complaint. Her neighbor was complaining about them. Mm -hmm. And so I think it might be good, you know, um, stuff going back and forth with the neighbors. I think she wants, you know, some official from the commission that she's not really doing anything in, improper. So, you know, we're, I know okay. we, we're going to set up Saturday. So the complaint in, the person that's being complained about, what is their address? I think they're 30 and then the person who sent the complaint was 30 and the person was, uh, who was complained against was 32 and 32 was requesting that that um, we, we have some documentation that that you know she's not doing anything um, in violation of the commission. Okay. Um, you've been out there? I have. I would just prefer not to be involved. You personally? No, not me personally, but the board, it seems like you want us to have some sort of validation, but it, unless, is it flagged out there? Well, I, I should probably give you the copy of the complaint. Um, it was just, uh, was, I don't have the copy of it right now. Maybe I can send it to, to the commission. We could, we could bring it up yeah. at, the, at the next meeting. Yeah. Because I mean, we can view it from the street, right? I mean, if there's not the mm -hmm. flags, I know they were flagged for Sleepy Hollow. So if those flags are still existing, that would give us a better handle on this is where we're seeing the uh, limit. Yeah, I, maybe I'll give a copy of the complaint and what we have, a, uh, maybe bring up at the next meeting. Yeah, so. and if you have um, like the Sleepy Hollow, that section of the stream there. Yeah, it wasn't so much the stream. It was just a, a couple, a couple of trucks and some other stuff. I mean, I didn't. So, Board of Health had the complaint first. They had the complaint, you know, also, but there was there they they mentioned how there was an some underground stream and some other stuff going on. So, because of that, I went out and took a look at it. Okay. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Yeah, I mean, if we can't jurisdictionally establish anything from the the information that we have. It would need to be professionally flagged and um, yeah. something proven to us. We're not going to determine that. Right. right. So. I, mean, I mean, when I sent the complaint, I have a video too that mm -hmm. I can show and then I can invite them to be at the next meeting if you want. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be better than us scheduling a site walk. Okay. Great. I, it's between two neighbors. Right. Um, so unless there's something glaring that we can use the existing data and plans that we have to establish some something that we can hang our hat on, I don't know why we would um, make any determinations and get involved. Like people need to pay for experts and professional right. wetland scientists to determine their sides. Okay. Where where okay. you know you did your due diligence, address the complaint, maybe. It, my opinion will change once we see right. what the complaint looks like, but um, I prefer to wait until and that you can invite them to the meeting and yeah, we'll, we'll put it on for a general discussion, either a discussion or I can make an agenda item for the. I mean, the, the, the next we meeting. We have a ton of stuff too. What's right? that? We have a ton of stuff. Yeah, we could do it for the fifteenth. Yes. 
Uh, I would say under discussion. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Or anybody else have any questions or opinions on that? Nope. Nope. No. no. no? Okay. Nope. Whatever happened to. All right. And next. Um, peer review, we've already voted on the 45 Oak Street, so we've got that. Um, electronic signatures, possible votes, we already pretty much took care of that, right? We're going to still pass around the Adobe sign. Yes. What? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Conservation expense account, possible votes. Yep. So we have, I think there's, there's roughly $2,000 in expense account. So the expense account is used for um, commission for going to meetings and any other items that they might they might need for, for advertising, advertising and whatnot. Yeah, whatever is not used goes back into the general fund. So after this fiscal year, which is June thirtieth, that money goes back in the general fund. I think they were looking for because of COVID nineteen, the town's doing some work um, with the food pantry and other aspects that I think. That's what I'm hearing. I might be incorrect, but they might be looking for some funds that are available. Um, so, last meeting, we had asked you about your computer and the RAM and the yeah, I think it's just uh, a yeah, we do have a wetlands protection fund, which is a side one where I we we could use um, the revenue from that to purchase a, a computer next fiscal year if the time comes. I haven't had a chance to look into the the I talk to the IT guy or look into might be better just buying a cheaper buying a new computer. Okay. But I think they have, they've asked all the boards. Yeah. So, so your conserv the conservation expense account that two thousand dollars will eventually just go to the general fund anyway this year. If you don't use it by the thirtieth. Yep. Okay. Do we anticipate using it? I don't think so. Okay. Do we want to keep something in there just in case we want to use it? Yeah, I would. Okay. Um, what would what would be your suggestion? Um, probably six hundred bucks. I mean, there's only a couple months left. For a reserve. For a reserve. We have what one or two is about two or three meetings left. Unless you know, there's something outstanding the commission is going to be wanting to do, but um, that sounds you know, reasonable to me. They're budgeted, you know, by you know July first, you'll have the hopefully the budget again. The new budget. New budget. Okay. So, um, motion for transfer fourteen hundred. So move. Yes, I make a motion to transfer the fourteen hundred back to the town. Okay, motion to made by Katie Grace. Second. Second by Art. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Steve, you got that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. And we have no signed vouchers. I Any vouchers to sign? I don't think so. She didn't send any to me. No. Nope. Okay, and um, we have we don't have any minutes. I asked you about the meeting minutes. I, I saw some uh, email. Is it, someone yeah. did they email come over today? I think it was today. Yeah, they came like this afternoon, but um, well, we got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> yeah. I, said, I, said, I said they're itching for meeting minutes. Yeah. There were three attachments to the email. One of them, I don't know what it was. It wouldn't open. So the meeting minutes? Yeah, well, so two of the minutes open, one didn't. Oh. Okay, so correct. The one for April 6th is broken. The file is either corrupted or there's something wrong with it. So we don't have the 6th, but we have the 27th and we have May March 2nd. And I looked at, I think I looked at March 2nd and I started seeing a hand, not, I won't say a handful, that sounds, I saw some issues. So I think that we should take the time to look at these. And I think we need, you know, I'm sure they're they're probably okay, but we're gonna need the sixth recent. The April sixth recent. Yeah. Okay. I just that I can't open the file either. And I'll it, talk to, I talk to Marie every Tuesday night, so. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, that's all it is, but I can I can open the second and and I can open the 27th and I saw issues with one of them, so. Okay. Okay, so board, please take a look at those meeting minutes. And oh yeah, there's there's one, like at least in the April 27 minutes where there's a question kind of in red ink that I think, you know, they're looking for something. Yeah, I haven't had right, whoever types of meetings is looking for something from the board to fill in the space. So, okay. All right, um, Byron. Yeah, I have. Are you just um, hanging out with us, or? Oh, actually, I, I, I was trying. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I seem to have some troubles on my end. Um, I actually, uh, this is something that I wanted to say in regard to Bonnie Johnson, but um, I was having trouble with my computer and I couldn't actually um, turn my uh, audio on in time. Um, I just have something I'd like to put in the public record, um, which is at the last meeting, Bonnie Johnson had a copy of one of our plans and um, she had, or, or her engineer had modified the plan by um, adding on the location of the dry well. Um, since I had been the surveyor who stamped the plan, um, I just want to enter it in the public record that um, she didn't have my permission to change the plan. I was not informed of it. And I take no responsibility for the design or the installation um, of the dry well. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that it was clear that that was um, done by another party and even though my stamp was on the plan it does not represent my work okay understood okay uh, noted for the record um can you also put a note on the plan too whatever she is um submitted that he's talking about the last one as well as the one that we saw tonight that was also revised with a line and a dot Okay. Byron, anything else or does that take care of that? That takes care of it. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Have Thank a good you. one. You too. Thanks. All right. Yeah, I, I realized that uh, that somebody else had gotten involved when we looked at it last time. So that's not a surprise to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, board, anything else? I'll make a motion to adjourn if nobody has anything else. Please. I, I, I want to say you guys are doing such a great job as a board. It's I been, barely make motions in an acceptable manner. It's been, such a busy, it's, been, <laughs> it's, been extremely, it's been an extremely busy time, and it's hard to clear the deck. And it's not no fault of yours or the Zoom meeting. Um, it's just the way some of these projects work sometimes, but uh, I think you guys are doing a great job. So, yep. I concur. Good group effort. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For sure. All right, we'll see you on Saturday. Okay. Um, there was. Where are we? Where are we meeting on Saturday? You'll see my car there. If you go, if you go by long, the, uh, all the way to Rhode Island Line, I'll I'll, I'll get there early. Um, we can park right outside. We'll park on the side of the road. Off of uh, what is that? Yeah. What road is that? While I'm like road. Yeah, it's what time, what time was that? Video. Eleven a.m. Eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Take Wallam what Lake Road all the way towards the Rhode Island line. Yeah, and if yeah, if you go if you hit the Rhode Island line, just turn around. It, it, you'll Point see it. Two, two, three houses before the line is a little pullover area. Okay. <laughs> okay. Art made a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Say bye. Bye, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.